Joining me now with reaction from the great state of Alaska, Fox News contributor Governor Sarah Palin. Governor, welcome back. Thanks so much, Shen Sean. Those clips that you chose, that uh, is a good reflection of these guys last night. A great debaters showing up, and uh, all of them seem to be loaded for bear or moose or yeah, elk it, or it, it whatever. Was it, it was a great debate. Yeah, I, I thought by far the best debate. Of, of all the debates, and maybe it was because they all had a little bit more time. I, I like the fact the, the interaction with the crowd was amazing. It was electric in that room. Um, do you have a feeling, who do you think did best in the debate? What did you see about the candidates? What did you learn last night that you didn't know before? Well, first, uh, uh, Rick Perry, you know, he showed up having, it seemed uh, to have been able to partake in some of that famous Texas chili and some Dr. Pepper, too, from his home state. Somebody must have imported it to him because he was on fire with some of those segments that he participated in. He was a true patriot, and I was so proud of him, and he should be proud of his debate performance. And then Santorum, too, he had an opponent up on the ropes, and that's what you have to do, too, in order to, uh, you know, get to the truth, get to the foundation of some of the... Ideas and beliefs that are being espoused by candidates. But I do think that Newt is the one who um, uh, won the debate, if you will, because Newt came out just like South Carolina's own Smoking Joe Frazier. He came out there swinging, talking about work, talking about jobs and work ethic, and how government needs to get out of the way in order for all Americans to have a sense of opportunity to work. And I think that's what a lot of voters have been craving to hear. All right, we talked last time about Todd, uh, your husband, going rogue. Uh, you haven't gone rogue yet. You haven't given an endorsement. Are you getting any closer to giving an endorsement? Well, I can tell you what I would do if I were a South Carolinian because, uh, you know, well, I'm, I'm a true believer in... Yeah. Well, if I were a South Carolinian, though, and each one of these primaries and caucuses are different, Sean, I, I want to see this thing continue because iron sharpens iron, still sharpens still. These guys are getting better in their debates. They're getting more concise. They're getting more um, grounded in what their beliefs are and articulating what their ideas are to get the country back on the right track and get Americans working again. If I had to vote in South Carolina in order to keep this thing going, I'd vote for Newt, and I would want this to continue more debates, more vetting of candidates, because we know the mistake made in our country four years ago was having a candidate that was not vetted to the degree that he should have been so that we know, knew what his associations and his pals represented and what went into his, his thinking, the shaping of who our president today is. That vetting did not take place. I want to see that taking place this time because America is on that precipice. It's that important. We need this Process to continue. All right, let, let me then ask do you buy into the narrative that this is Romney, non Romney, which so many people have spoken about so often? Do you think Governor Perry, Senator Santorum, and former Speaker Gingrich are battling for the more conservative vote in the party? Do you think that, do you agree with that analysis? Well, you know, the math is what it is, and you can't argue with the numbers, and the numbers seem to show that, yes, conservatives are splitting the vote uh, between those candidates whom you mentioned and the more moderate uh, Governor Romney. So, uh, yeah, the, the math is what it is, and at some point here, I don't think it's time yet, but at some point here, I believe that some of the more conservative candidates are going to have to decide, are they going to take one for the team? Are they going to step aside and pursue via one single conservative candidate that nomination as they go up, up against the front runner today. All right, so then one person you really haven't mentioned tonight is Governor Romney. Uh, now, there are some questions about what the final vote tally will be from the Iowa caucus. We should know soon. Um, we know he won New Hampshire by a pretty significant margin. He's leading. He has, a, he has a lead now in South Carolina and a lead in Florida, the next two states. So are you saying maybe after South Carolina that there's going to have to, that two of the three, quote, more conservative candidates are going to have to step aside? Do you think it has to be that soon? Because does it not begin to become inevitable that Governor Romney, and would you be against Governor Romney being the nominee? 
I think a lot of people right now in the media and certainly on the left want to make be uh, voters believe that it is inevitable that today's front runner, who has all the campaign cash in order to run these um, these ads and has you know strong super PACs that have a lot of money to run a lot of negative ads against opponents, they want us to believe that it's inevitable that the more moderate candidate will be the one to face Obama um, in the fall. Uh, however, I don't personally believe that it is inevitable, and I also don't believe that he, with the most money, actually has to be the one uh, who wins. So, no, I don't know if, if right after South Carolina, if that's the right timing yet. And, um, Sean, right timing yet for somebody to drop out or a couple people to drop out and then coalesce around um, the more conservative candidate in order to very starkly contrast themselves and their ideas and their experience against Barack Obama. Uh, but, Sean, no, I have said, as I believe you have said from the beginning, anybody but Obama. Yeah. We know that any of these GOP candidates are, are um, so much better and more experienced and grounded in what our Constitution represents and how we are supposed to be using our Constitution, not changing it, using it as our blueprint to progress this nation. Any of them would be better than Obama. Can I, can I ask you then, if you were in South Carolina, you would vote for Newt Gingrich. Uh, that would be on Saturday. You want the process to continue. You want the vetting to continue. You want to see these candidates pushing, pushing each other. Does that mean you would be leaning towards endorsing, like your husband, Newt Gingrich, if you had to choose today, is that who you're leaning towards? You know why I want that process to continue? Because with the front runner and with all the candidates, there's still too many questions. We have to have these questions answered right now. And that has to do with their business dealings. That has to do with their experience while they served in office, because all of them have a record, unlike Barack Obama not having a record when he was elected. Now, of course, he does. And now, of course, we get to run against his record that was so harmful to our nation. I want the process to continue because answers need to be given to American voters today instead of some October, early November surprises that you know the Democrats are just dying to be able to throw out there on whomever it is who wins the nomination on the GOP ticket. Yeah. We need to make sure that front runner and all others have everything out there in the open as transparent as possible in order to um, let the voters uh, be prepared for what's coming, make up our minds whether we believe that maybe an issue or two that they have that could cause some problems is paramount and would prohibit um, them being the best person to help lead our nation. All right, Governor Palin, stay right there. We're going to come back. We'll continue more with Governor Palin. We'll talk about the term that was used by Newt Gingrich in the debate that has created a bit of a controversy. Is Barack Obama the food stamp president? Plus, the and as we continue on Hannity and we continue with former Alaska Governor Fox News contributor Sarah Palin. Governor, it's interesting. It seems the White House is very sensitive to this criticism of being called the food stamp president, meaning Barack Obama. Uh, they had Jay Carney out there. Oh, that, that idea is crazy. Uh, the New York Times basically accusing Newt of, of practicing racial politics. Others made the claim. Let me remind everybody of the exchange that took place at the Fox debate in Myrtle Beach. Juan Williams, Newt Gingrich. Here's a part of it. Why you refer to President Obama as the food stamp president? It sounds as if you are seeking to belittle people. The fact is that more people have been put on food stamps by Barack Obama than any president in American history. Now, I know among the politically correct, you're not supposed to use facts that are uncomfortable. Now, second, you are the one who earlier raised a key point. There's a, the area that ought to be I-73 was called by Barack Obama a corridor of shame because of unemployment. Has it improved in three years? No. They haven't built the road. They haven't helped the people. They haven't done anything. What's your reaction to that? Uh, I mean, factually, he's right. How do people jump from there, to stating a fact, more people on food stamps, as a result of Obama's policies, he hasn't fixed the problem of poverty or unemployment, and we have nothing to show for it, and you say it, and somehow that turns into something racial uh, in the minds of some people. That's over the line in the minds of others. What do you make of that? Yes, this White House on this issue has 
it's with so many other issues, they doth protest too much because the facts are what they are, and that's hundreds of thousands of more Americans are now on food stamps than before Barack Obama took over. L look, man was created to work, and when uh, the American public believes that they don't have opportunity for jobs because they th see things like President Obama um, thwarting the idea that the, the project of the Keystone Pipeline and other natural resource development projects that we are on the cusp of, but he won't allow it to happen. People have this pessimistic sense of a lack of opportunity, and what that leads to is a lot of societal ills, like abuse and subpar education and security threats and a whole lot of other things that government spends a lot of money on after the fact trying to cure, instead of just government getting out of the way, allowing the entrepreneurial spirit of America to rise, allow people to work, allow people with government getting out of the way to not be so overburdened that they can grow their businesses and hire more people. When that doesn't happen, yeah, then people, they have to, uh, unfortunately, look to government to help them out, it, it seems, because that's what the numbers show us, and that's why more people are on food stamps. More hey. people are looking for government assistance. It's a conflict of visions that we have here, the GOP filled versus what Obama and his White House represents, whether it's going to be government being the answer or no, individual initiative and what America was built on well, being the answer. What have we gotten for, for the president taking a sledgehammer to every kid's piggy bank and spending $5 trillion. I did the math the other day. I mean, if, if you look at population, 310 million people, and you take 5 or $6 trillion and you disperse it among people and you take out the 50% that don't need it, you're dealing with real money, tens of thousands of dollars going to every uh, man, woman, and child in the bottom 50%. What, what do we have for this money? It's amazing. And when you say your policies aren't working, more people are on food stamps, that's over the line. Pretty amazing. Yeah. Heaven forbid you bring out a fact like that and you shed light on what the truth is that more people are on food stamps today than they were before. That is why this election is so important, Sean. People feel like government is riding on our backs right now. The only way that government can ride your back is if it's bent. We need to stand up with strong titanium spines, as Michelle Bachman used to talk about, and we need to say no more. We do know what works. We know these time-tested truths about free markets and, and free, free men who, and women who are able to get out there and do what they do best with their work yeah. ethic that they have been created with. This is that conflict of visions that it's coming down to, and that is why I do not say it's inevitable that the GOP ticket is already locked up right now with the front runner. I want to see it continue because I want more ideas and more solutions debated so we can bring the best person forward in order to counter that liberal leftist a socialist idea of Barack Obama's right. that big centralized government is the answer. Last question. You had an admonition in a prior interview for the Republican Party that they better be careful about Ron Paul and respectful to Ron Paul. Um, now, I've talked about areas where I agree with him. I'd love to cut a trillion dollars immediately. His comments on the Fed. I think he's been, you know, an advocate for smaller uh, government for a long time. But last night, he talks about our endless bombing of countries is the reason why they are mad at us. He's talked in the past about capturing bin Laden, trying bin Laden, that it was wrong to get bin Laden the way we did. Um, it just, as a conservative, he, he, this message sounds more like Dennis Kucinich to me or President Obama. Um, very hard left in my mind. His, his supporters will say no libertarian, isolationist, whatever you say, non-interventionist, whatever phrase you want to use. When you hear him on foreign policy, what is your reaction then? When I hear him on foreign policy, I know that there's no way in heck that America could afford to have his foreign policy ideas lead our nation. No, it would be a dangerous state that we would be in if we were to believe that America needs to apologize for what it is as we get out there in the world and, and um, try to help perpetuate this idea of freedom that man was created to, um, to have within all of us. So, no, 
and when I talk about not marginalizing Ron Paul supporters, it's because I know some of these supporters, and some of these supporters are good people, and they don't agree necessarily with his foreign policy ideas, but like you, they agree that we need to cut a trillion dollars a year off this federal budget, otherwise we're going under. They know that Ron Paul has some austerity ideas when it comes to our economy, and auditing the Fed, and ratcheting in some of these departments, or getting rid of some of these departments, and allowing the Tenth Amendment to rise again, and allowing states to have more rights. Mm -hmm. Now, Ron Paul represents some good things in that arena. Foreign policy, no, don't agree with. All right, Governor, always great to see you. I think you made a little news tonight. Thank you uh, for being with us. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Sean.